Le Frossé, the French. They are an eccentric bunch of people and they make good food. But they also make eccentric cars to the point where almost every single French car will make you scratch your head and wonder why certain things exist. And this, well, this is India's newest French car. This is the Citroen C3. But before we take a bit of a deep dive into the C3, let me tell you why Citroen as a brand deserves a lot more respect in the auto industry than they get. You've seen with our egg basket challenge that they make some really comfy cars, but to be honest, their brilliance lies in innovation. They pioneered front wheel drive and made it reliable and usable. They mastered unibody construction and they also made vans what they are today. And then there is the DS, the most innovative car ever made. You know, I can talk about the DS all day long because it just is such an important car, but I won't because what you guys want me to do is talk about the C3 and not some older car. So, let's ask that big question, the burning question. Is the C3 mainstream enough? Can it take the fight to the big boys in that segment which it will go up against? Or is it just going to have a bunch of loyal fan base buy it up because it is quirky? Well, quirky it definitely is. In fact, a friend of mine called me and said, Cyrus, finally a car that's affordable and mass market that looks really, really premium and pleasing to the eye, which this really is. It looks like a million bucks. But then there are some throwbacks that I want to talk about. For example, this little fender thing, this little scooped out fender. Citroen didn't need to do this, but this, I think, is a bit of a throwback. It's a bit of a hark back to the 2CV fender, which was similarly scooped out. I like these sort of little things. And I also really like the way it looks. It really does look more expensive at a glance. It looks premium. Paint quality is top notch too and so is the LED setup and the plastics on the outside. It all just ties up to the design really well. But it isn't all roses and rainbows. The cost cutting gets so obvious once you get a closer look. No alloy wheels even on the top spec model and the flappy door handles. And then you have the key. I don't like this much. But what about the inside? Now let's split the interior part in two. Let's talk about design first and then let's talk about features and the lack of features both. Design. Citroen has absolutely nailed it. I think this is one of the coolest dashboards in any affordable sub 10 lakh rupee car because it just looks so in your face. It looks nice and chunky. It looks really well designed. It looks French. It looks like it's got some joie de vivre. Especially if you get this orange version that you get in the two-tone or the gray car. That said, the features which I talked about earlier, well, that cost cutting or the affordability of the Citroen C3 really comes to show a lot, lot more on the inside than it does on the outside. For example, no climate control. You've got these rotary knobs, which are, well, old. And you've got an instrument cluster, which is definitely a decade old. It definitely needed to have more data there. This is by far the most simplistic instrument cluster I've seen. In fact, there are scooters in India with more detailed instrument clusters. But at least it's legible and it's clear. It does what it's supposed to do. And then there are the manual, well, controls for the ORVMs and the fact that the inside rear view mirror doesn't have a dipper option. And the fact that you get only two power window switches for the front on the door and the other ones are in the bottom here, which seems to irk a lot of people on Instagram. That said, there is a bit of a saving grace. This screen is one of the best, most responsive and one of the nicest in terms of user interface and clarity that I've ever seen on an affordable car. <sighs> I really thought long and hard, no puns intended, before saying this, but I am sorry, 
those omissions aren't going to be looked upon kindly by an Indian audience who wants more tech, more fanciness and more gimmick. These cuts have been clearly done with somebody using an Excel sheet. Maybe the rear seat can be a saving grace then. Perfect timing as Goa went from oven hot to pouring wet in a matter of seconds. But if I can fit comfortably in the back seat of this, you certainly can. And yes, I know that maybe getting three people next to each other, if there's my size, would be a bit of a stretch. But normal people, I don't think that'll be an issue. Look at the amount of sheer leg space you get and headroom. And you sit slightly taller than the front seat. And the seats are nicely sculpted and comfortable. And you've got these big windows, which means you don't get claustrophobic. Okay, okay. Looking positive again, rear seats pass the wipe check, but will the car pass my drive check? And of course, we will start with what Citroen does so well, comfort. And speaking about comfort, wait right till the end of the video where I give you a bit of trivia that you guys never asked for, but I'm gonna give it to you. Nonetheless, DMX vibes. X don't give it to you. Wait for you to get it on your own. Now, comfort is something that most modern cars actually deliver on pretty well. In fact, if you compare modern cars to their counterparts, say about 10 years ago, they're definitely a lot more comfortable overall. So Citroen will have to really make an effort to make this car a lot more comfortable, which means better suspension setup, better seats, better NVH levels. Like, guys, give me a second here because comfort we will talk about eventually soon in any case i want to talk about something a little more pertinent that i've just realized now this is the turbo which makes 110 horsepower and hey hey <laughs> you know what i thought that Citroen would take it easy and sort of well normal on the powertrain they won't make it an enthusiastic powertrain as such but this little thing gets quite the move on. I'd even go to the extent of saying that this is a fun little car to drive. Steering feels great as well. I mean, it doesn't feel as light as I would have expected a French car to feel. It's pretty well weighed, in fact. Who would have thought? You see, this is where the French kill it. These random end-to-end smile-inducing experiences. It's a bag of quirks, just when you least expect it. Okay, okay, enough fun has been had. Enough tires have been chirped from first to second. It's time to go back and talk about comfort because when Citroen says that it's gonna make a comfortable car, they mean that they're gonna make a comfortable car. Now. This is pretty much the benchmark, I guess, for all sub 10 lakh or whatever this is going to be priced at because it is genuinely comfortable. And it's not just suspension setup that they've made spot on and really on point when it comes to being plush and nice and quiet and comfortable. It's also the NVH levels in general and it's also the seats. They are well padded, cushy, comfy and all the other similar adjectives that you can think of but they are a little small. But maybe that is just me. Oh, also, a movable headrest is missed. Mat karo yaar, aisa cost cutting kyun? Kyun? I even got to drive the normal non-turbo 1.2 and I must say even that impressed me. Actually, you know what? It impressed me more than the turbo because it just is such a fantastic mechanical package. One of the best that we have seen in the mass market. Seriously, that good. And yet, ah, the lack of features. It is just too glaring. It just is. It's like putting a tubular movement in a Doraemon toy watch. We really need to, well, sit down and have a chat about 
What is the C3? Where does it lie in the greater scheme of things? Is it an SUV? Well, no, because Citroen is adamant that even with 180 mm of ground clearance, this is not an SUV or a crossover. Is it a premium hatchback with cross hatchback styling then? I don't think so, because if it was a premium hatchback, Citroen would have done a lot more in terms of features and tech. This, if I correlate it to food, isn't a salmon a papillon. It is, I think, a simple butter croissant. It's something that everybody can have. It's something that everybody can enjoy. And I think when Citroen announces the pricing for this thing on the 20th of July, we are in for a jaw-dropping shock because I think this is going to be priced somewhere in the 5 to 8 lakh range. In fact, I would wager a bet and say this behind us as it is now, the fully loaded turbocharged petrol version in this top of the line spec is a sub 10 lakh rupee car, which makes it phenomenal value for money. It is like a butter croissant then, everybody can enjoy one. Now let me throw in just a piece of trivia that none of you actually asked for but I noticed when I was sort of walking around the car taking my notes. Now the tyre size is a 195-65 R15. Do you know which other car had a 195-65 R15? Would you like time to guess? Let me give you a bit of a hint. It was one of the benchmarks of comfort in the 1990s. Yes, the Mercedes 124E Class. And yes, the E Class in India had a 15 inch tyre. Now, here's something that you now know. <laughs> 